Hey, it's Josh here. So over the next few days, I'm going to be doing a slightly different series um, on the on the channel here. Uh, I've never really done content about recording music and about software and DAWs and things like that. And, you know, I very much have my own kind of perspective and teaching styles on this sort of thing. And thought I'd just uh, throw in a bit of content in there um, over the next few days. So uh, from today, just over the next week, I'm going to be releasing... Um, a handful of videos that are to do with recording and uh, mixing and things like that. And these are actually pulled directly out of one of my uh, mini courses as well, which um, you can actually you can actually get uh, alongside the uh, the book that I've written, the One Strong Song Strategy book. Um, so I'm giving this to you for free because you know I want to I want to help you out, um, and you know hopefully you're gonna really enjoy the content as well. So. This first one is going to be an introduction to GarageBand. So if you are completely new to recording, you're completely new to, uh, you know, recording your own music at home and things like that, then GarageBand is an amazing software. And this little video is going to give you a, a full kind of introduction of how to use it and how it all works and uh, exactly where to get started. So let's dive right in. All right, welcome to this training video called Introduction to GarageBand. So this is just going to be a quick video where I show you around um, the DAW GarageBand. So if you are a Mac user, this is a DAW that actually comes free with all Macs. So it's a really brilliant DAW, especially if you're just getting started with this. And I just want to essentially just show you around like how it works, how, what the layout is and, and everything like that. Um, it's an absolutely brilliant DAW. It's a software that you can use to get really high quality and professional recordings as well. So let's get it opened up here and I'll just show you how the entire thing works. So it will come up with this window and then you just want to choose empty project and then um, then it will come up with this window where you choose your track type. So um, there's you know a few different options here. Um, generally, you're going to be recording audio if you're recording through something like a microphone, for example. Um, you can also do uh, like direct in. So that's essentially where you plug your guitar straight into your audio interface. And you can use the GarageBand amplifiers um, if you want to give them a go. Um, there's also software instruments, which is things um, like uh, pianos and synths that you would use on a MIDI keyboard. And they also have um, something called Drummer, where you can set up drum tracks and, and things like that as well, which I'll show you um, very shortly. But let's just go over an audio track for now. Um, you choose your input. So this is the input from your interface. So, um, you know, depending on what interface you have, you're going to have, you know, essentially likely one or two inputs. Um, so generally the generally they're numbered as well on the interface. So you can see um, you can see like where your microphone is actually plug, plugging into. And then you pick um, from here which input you want to uh, you want to be using so that you're picking up. Um, you know, where your microphone is actually plugged into. So we'll go for input one here and then create. So you can actually see, um, even though I'm actually recording this audio on Logic at the moment, you can see that it's picking it up in GarageBand as well because um, you can see the, the wave sample going up there. Um, so it's going to come up with, um, you know, these windows, uh, like this is, this is some uh, EQ and compression here. And this is where you can pick uh, the tonality of what it is that you're recording. So if you're recording like an acoustic guitar and stuff like that, that now this is this is generally something that you would do um, kind of like after you've recorded it. So you don't really want to be fiddling about with this like straight away. You you want to record something first. So I'd recommend just closing these windows. So to get rid of this one, you click on on that little symbol, and to get rid of this, you can click on that as well. And then uh, I'll just show you some of these uh, basic controls here. So this um, is quite handy. This is a little help button. So if you're not sure what's going on 
or what things are, you can essentially open that up and then you hover over things and then it tells you what it is. And I don't think Logic has that, so that's what's really good about GarageBand. It's really good if you're getting started with this and um, you know you just want something really simple to use. So you know even even if you have Logic um, or you know you're thinking about getting it, I'd still recommend starting on GarageBand and and then upgrading to Logic. You know once you kind of got used to this, because then it's just going to be so much easier. So that's really good. Um, that's the, uh, the little EQ compression, compressor thing there. Um, this is, uh, kind of like a zoomed in version of your audio track. So once you record something, um, then this is, this allows you to like edit things like, you know, more easily. Um, this is kind of like your, you know, basic controls. So you've got, uh, the play button. Um, you've got the record button, you've got the stop, you've got backwards and forwards, and that, that goes um, by bars. Um, and also you've got uh, this little loop thing here, which is also used to select, um, you know, what part of the, of the track or the song you want to turn into an audio file as well. Um, and then here you've got uh, your display. So you can actually change like what your display shows here. So beats and project we're on at the moment. You can have beats and time. So so how much how long um, the 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 audio is going on for. Um, then you can just have beats or just have time. So quite quite simple really. Um, this is where you pick your tempo. So it's in beats per minute. So you know once you've written your song then you'll have a certain tempo and you want to essentially figure that out. Um, you can get up an app on your phone or something on Google, just just Google tap tempo or find an app that, that does this and you can you can essentially tap along um, just just look by clicking um, on something like that. So I'll, I'll give I'll quickly show you. So if you Google tap tempo, and then this is one that I've used before, and you click this button, and then, so it says click here or on your space bar. So depending on what the tempo of your song is, three, four, for example, so you go one, two, three, four, and just see what it comes up with. So that's roughly around seventy-one BPM, and then I just then I just put that in there, and that will that will give you the tempo of the entire project. So that's really handy. And then you put in your time signature. So you know four four is pretty common, um, but also three four as well. Um, so one two three one two three. So you put that in, or you know there's there's loads of different six eight seven eight twelve eight. You know, generally you're going to be you're going to be in four four, but you know, depending on what what, what the song is you've written, you want to actually select that. Um, you can also select the key of the song here. This isn't really necessary. Um, it's you know, it's going to be more helpful if you are are using MIDI. Um, but if you're just mostly recording audio, you don't really need to put the key of your song. Um, but you know, it's it's completely up to you. Um, it can be there as a, like a nice reminder if you're like open up the project another time or something. Um, this is your tuner. So if you're tuning an instrument like a guitar, um, this allows you to uh, tune it right in the in the project, which is awesome. Um, this is uh, just a little counting, um, a little counting symbol. So you know when when you go to record. Um, then it gives you like a one, two, three, four counting before you actually start recording, which is good. Um, that's your metronome, so you have a click to play along to, which you always want to have. Um, so that's really important. Um, got a little notepad there if you want to make notes about the project, and also you've got a load of loops here as well that are included, um, which are really good. You can literally like build out an entire song if you wanted to with just loops. So you know, or to just get ideas for your song and things like that. Um, so now we come down to the actual project itself. Um, so you know it's all it's all laid out in bars. So um, the bars of the song that you're writing, 
Um, and then these are your actual tracks. Um, so you can name it something like, you know, lead vocal. So make make sure you do this. Make sure you, um, you know, organize everything really nicely so that uh, when you come back to it, you know what's going on. That's really, really important. Um, then from here, you can uh, create more tracks. You click that little plus symbol and then you can create like another audio track, for example. It's always going to keep up opening these windows, but you don't need you don't usually need them. Um, so then that could be, you know, like acoustic guitar. Acoustic guitar, there you go. Um, if your audio interface has two inputs on it, then, you know, there's always the option of actually recording your vocal and your guitar at the same time. If you have, um, you know, the ability to do that, if you have, you know, two microphones, or you can even do it with one microphone. Um, so you, you'd, you'd plug your microphone into another input, like input two, and then create that. And then that would be your input two um, track that you could that you could do that with. And then from there, it's just quite simple, really. You just hit record. It's going to play the little metronome. You might not actually be able to hear that. You want you want to make sure that that's um, that's clicked. And then, so it's actually not recording any audio there because it's selected for input two. But if we go to this one, and then you can do input monitor monitoring there, so that you can actually hear what's going on. Um, you can actually hear, you know, the microphone being picked up and then you can hit record. It gives you the count in and then it will start actually recording the audio as you can see there. So it's really, really very simple. And then just press space to stop. Done. And then you can take input monitoring off if you want. And then you've got a recording there. So, you know, that's pretty much how it works. You set up your microphone put it in front of your instrument or your voice and you know you just hit record um later on in the in this video um you know i'm going to be showing you actually how to set up microphones for you know like guitar and vocal and things like that um but you know that's just the basics of what you have to do in garage band um i'll just very quickly show you um I'll show you this. So this is like the little the little guitar thing. So this is where you can plug a guitar DI straight into your interface and you can use their amplifiers and things like that to actually um, create different sounds. So, you know, there's so many different ones to choose from. Um, you know, I personally don't use the, the, uh, the Logic and GarageBand stuff. Um, I tend to use uh, one called S Gear, which is which is actually my personal favourite. But um, you know, if you're just getting started and you don't have like a guitar amp or something like that, then absolutely give these a go. Um, you know, they're they're a, they're absolutely a good starting place. Um, so you you know, there's like so many different ones to try. Just select them, and I think there's a way. There's usually a way of opening them up and actually like editing them like and adjusting them and things but maybe maybe garage band doesn't actually have that it's more logic that does um but you still got you know a fair amount to choose from so you know that's something to to try and also drummer as well so this is really good so um so you've got lots of different kind of like like styles that you can choose from rock alternative songwriter and you can uh i'll write it i haven't downloaded it so that's what's going on there so let's find that one i've actually got so this one here indie rock um and then you can adjust it even more down here this is actually very similar to logic this is pretty much exactly the same um where you can you know add in like toms or take them away, add in symbols, take them away. Um, you can choose. This is your. This is just kind of like the way that they play it. So like there's different like kind of styles and things that you can you can listen to. So you can give it a play.
So that's really cool. And then you can, you know, if you if you have like a particular one that you find that you really like, you can um, hold down the Alt key and then hold down the track. And then you see that little green plus symbol come up there, drag it, and then it copies it over. And then from there, you can edit that, that other one separately. And, um, you know, you can have like a different, like, for example, if that's like a chorus section, you can have a different drum pattern going on there. You can add in claps, you can add in shakers, you know, something that, that gives it a bit of progression, stuff like that. So it's really good. It's really, really good um, that this, this like whole drummer software for Logic and GarageBand. Um, and I'd recommend, you know, absolutely giving it a go if you're not planning to record drums yourself or you're not planning to actually hire like a session drummer or something like that, then, uh, you know, this is this is great. This is a great um, piece of software that comes with um, both Logic and GarageBand. So absolutely give it a go. Um, so that's pretty much the gist of it. That is um, how you, you know, kind of like get started with this. Um, one thing I'd recommend that I forgot to mention is when you um, when you first open up your project and you you know you start a new project, um, you, you'll see it's untitled here. I'd just recommend as soon as you open it up, go and save it and keep it in you know a nice organized folder, um, just so that you know anything that you work on, you're not going to lose it if your computer um, you know crashes or anything like that just um just a little just a little tip there because i've made that mistake um too many times before um but that's pretty much it so uh that's the gist of it there are um you know things that you'll just learn as you go um you know one little handy thing um if you want to see what's going on in your project hold down the alt key and then you can drag along on your mouse or your trackpad so that you can zoom in zoom out stuff like that that's that's a nice little one um there's a few shortcuts that logic has that garage band doesn't um which you know i'll be talking about a bit more in the in the next video um but absolutely use the little helper tool as well if you're not too sure what's going on um but you know it's a really easy software to use um and it's a great place to start so i hope that's that's helped if you have any uh, questions about it then please do um, you know leave a comment underneath the the video in in the course and I'll be sure to get back to you but apart from that I will leave it there and let's move on to the next training video cheers <laughs>